Nano Nano? Well, I was Nanu Nanu. That's it. You got to be old if you got that. Get back to the Mork and Mindy days. But no, that's what we're not talking about here. This is the uh, Longer Nano Pro. It's a Galvo type laser, and this is something new to me in this shop because I have not worked with the Galvo laser before. It is still a blue diode laser, but it is a uh, galvanometer, is the way they call it. It uses that instead of stepper motors. It's very, very fast. Uh, that said, it's not for doing huge projects either. It's very specific for uh, certain types of projects. Um, I have not taken out of the box yet, so we're going to get this thing unboxed. This one comes with the slide extension and the rotary attachment. I know that because it says it on the box. But we're going to get this out and uh, kind of see what we got here. Like I said, this is something new to me in the shop here. Well, we have a box within a box. Oh! This is one of the places where you could use a third hand. Uh, that being said, yes, this was provided to me by Longer to uh, test and demonstrate along with uh, it's the same as I've done with uh, a lot of their other projects and uh, products, I should say. Uh, the Longer Ray 5 laser, the Longer B1, the uh, Longer LK5 3D printer, the LK4 X 3D printer. I have all of those. They get used a lot. Uh, like I say, I am not sponsored by them, but they did provide this to me to uh, test demonstrate. So any opinions and anything else will be my own. It's the same as, as I do with the uh, other lasers and 3D printers. That being said, now we'll get this unboxed. This would make a nice carry box, I suppose, if you were taking this portable, although there would be a few caveats of going portable with it, uh, like shows that we'll get into later. This is still not a class one laser. Well, we got a piece of foam on top here. We have a setup guide card reader and TF card it says on here I'm reading what's on the box is power adapter motor extension cable we have the guard shield whatever you want to call it goggles glasses cloth so you got some goggles I wonder what color these are these are green which is okay but the ideal color is uh, orange, and I have uh, some cloud ray goggles I wear with my prescription glasses. But uh, these are absolutely better than nothing. Don't be using this without safety glasses on. Even if you have the shield on it, keep your safety glasses on. A little box here. Consumables. So in here we have some uh, test materials that we will test. And here we have the, what well, must be the base plate. I gotta watch I don't miss anything here because I have unboxed things before and when they're packed in this foam, I actually end up missing something. Here's another little box, this toolbox. I can hear this hardware in there. And this must be our Z axis. And then we have the uh, Galvo laser head itself. It has a lens cap on it. Uh, make sure you remove that before you try to use this, or you won't get very far. Now, what do we got here? Miss anything else in there? Nope. Oh, we got another plethora of parts in here. We have a nice metal ruler. I'm sure that's part of the rotary. This would be the slide, slide base. Oh boy, that's well built there, that's the rotary. Bracket. Now these you can miss if you're not watching for them, this, these clamps, because they are the same color as the foam and they're kind of stuck down in there. Then we have jaws for the rotary. There's two different sets of three for that. Must be more for the slide. Okay, to miss anything else here. 
You could uh, theoretically pack everything back in there, like I said, if you were going to go portable, just to make a nice little carry box. One nice little feature here with their toolbox is everything on there is labeled. So if you're not real familiar with uh, how many M&Ms things are or what the different lengths are, everything on here is labeled. And when I say M&Ms, I mean millimeters. So you grammar police, I, I know you get all excited when I do that. That's why I like doing it. Okay, uh, getting everything kind of set out here and separated. I think this uh, first video here will be just on the assembly of everything. Then we'll get into the uh, setups and other projects in separate videos, otherwise this could get to be insanely long. The guard here has a uh, fan mounted to it, a little USB cable, I know it plugs in on the back. As I said, I'm just getting everything kind of unpacked here and sorted out. I know these jaws will be part of the rotary, as I have done other rotaries before. So I'm going to set everything for the rotary back yonder there for now. And we'll get into setting up just the basic laser. And I'm actually going to follow the directions. I think the assembly here is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, you get your base plate here, the riser, four holes, four holes, they match up, they go right there. And then the screws come in from the bottom and you're going to use uh, M4 by 8s of the flathead variety. They do give you uh, allen wrenches in there, but I'm going to use my uh, drivers because it's just easier for me. I'm not tightening these up yet, I'm just taking them down until they're snug. So we get everything in and started and lined up and yeah, once I've got everything in there, then I'll tighten them up all the way. Just that easy. Okay, there is a lens cover on here you're going to have to take off. I'm going to do it right now, just so I don't forget. Uh, it fits pretty tight. So the next step would be to uh, mount the laser to the base. And there's a square right there, and there's a thumb screw underneath, and there's a hole right here. So the next thing they tell you to do is to put the shield on next, uh, and of course they do remind you to take the lens cap off, but I'm not going to put the shield on quite yet. There'll be a box there that'll have the data cable and the uh, double type C cable, motor extension cable. So all these cables are in these little bags here. And everything is color coded. As it is on the uh, back of the laser head, everything has a color code to it. As you see right there, so you can plug everything in according to color. If you're colorblind, you're going to have to pay closer attention. But otherwise, the colors are right there. So I'll get all these unpacked. The shield has a fan on it, and it has a plug here, a little green plug. Um, it's not up quite high enough for me to put that on yet. So I'm going to uh, wait until I get this hooked up to raise it up. Then I could put that on, and this would obviously plug into the green jack back there. So our next one is a blue one, is the output port for the electric stand. So we have this blue cable here. And the stand plug is right down here at the bottom. And next, the yellow is uh, accessory port. And the red goes to your computer. Before I go any further here, I'm going to have to have to get my power adapter out, and it is uh, the wall wart style, as I call them. It appears to have a fairly long cord on it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's about five feet long. That will plug in right there on the back. I'll we'll get this over and plugged in. The switch is right here up at the top. The button you just push down. Now if you hold the little arrow down there, you can raise that up. I'm doing this so I can put that shield on. Here we go a little more. Yeah, the shield is just held on by magnets. Well, it's not overly loud. Some of them fans on some of these lasers are just obnoxiously loud. This is not. 
he also in the, one of your boxes here is what they call a cable clip. It's for cable management. It would be this guy right here, which will clip onto the side. I'll show you here in a minute. We have a soft tape measure. There's a TF card in here, and there is a ruler in there. And the ruler, 151 millimeter, if you were to want to focus manually to your project, you would use this. And we'll get into that here in a minute. You have to do it right off the lens which is be a little difficult to do with the shield on there. So let me pop this off a minute. Let me just move that out of the way. And I need to put something down there. One way to do is focus by ruler here is I put a little piece of this uh, 16th inch or 8th inch plywood down here. You would go from the lens to the work by moving the uh, head down until it just touches. So we are focused there. The other method is to uh, there's a little button right up here on the top that you would push. I should say touch. Okay, something I can point out. There's a little piece of protective plastic over the top of this in the front. If you don't peel that off, your, your touch button doesn't work. You've got to peel the plastic off. So I was sitting there fumbling with that. I thought, why doesn't this work? But when you touch that, it puts a little red dot down there. Hopefully you can see that. So a little red dot right there. So there's actually two beams that converge, but since I already focused it with a ruler and it's in focus, I'm going to take this out of focus, so I'll raise it up. So what you'll see is, and boy, I hope you can see that, there are two red dots there that are about a quarter inch apart right now. So I need to lower this back down until those two dots converge. Right there. Maybe I should do that on something dark. Oh, that doesn't work either. But if I were to move this, I would see two dots on my base plate. But I am focused for this piece of plywood. So that's the two different ways to focus it. And when you're done focusing, you just touch that again and the LED light goes out. Okay, the cable management bracket here. It just clips onto the side. And you can route your cables. This is one that goes to the computer and I don't know how. Now yeah, we'll put it in there anyway for right now. These are different size slots in here. And there would be one for the power cord as well, but I'm a little short on length here. I need to get a laptop over here. These little brackets right here can be uh, positioned to different places. If you wanted to kind of make a somewhat of a jig for your project. You can also take this plate out of the bottom. It just lifts out. If you were to uh, want to just set this on something and engrave down through that spot there. But I'm going to uh, set this up so I can get on a corner here. Which this little piece of wood is a little bit big for what I wanted to do there. But you get the idea. I can't, there's not a hole up here for this other screw. I'll just store it back there. And that kind of makes a square in there. You don't have to use those. I just kind of would kind of show you uh, what they're for. Okay, and also packaged in there is this TF card, or micro SD card, whatever you want to call it. It's got a little USB adapter there. So I've got light burn open, and I'm going to, everything I'm doing here is a setup and light burn. And this has supposed to have a profile file on it. So what I want to do here is go to devices and import. And I need to find that little USB drive. Software, there it is, Laser Nano, LBDEV. And the, what you saw above that is a CH340 driver. If you do not have that on your computer, you will need to install it. It's already on here.
And there it is right there at the bottom. Just click OK. And I'm on COM5 and I am connected. Okay, to do something as kind of a sample here, there are some uh, illustrations in that on that SD card. It's called cases. So let's do, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll do a butterfly. So there's our butterfly. Okay, once you have your image in here, and uh, I won't go into all the settings on that and everything, uh, you do need to make a couple changes. I, well, I guess I better go into some of the settings here. So I'm going to go to cuts and layers. I've got this uh, engraving right now. So on the image, it's just a butterfly. It's on the micro SD card. Um, I went for Stucky. You need to change this to uh, 0 0.06 on your line interval. And you need to enable constant power mode. My setting here for this little piece of plywood is 6,000 millimeters per minute at 20% power. So once you do that, and you would normally, if you had a, a different type of laser, you would just go over here and you just click on frame and then you would hit start. And you got another step you got to do in here. And that is you need to click on this button here that says switch carving mode. That uh, enables the uh, Galvo head on here. And then we have uh, other connections here for the rotary and for the slide. And we'll get into those when we get into that later as, le as well as connecting to Wi-Fi. I do not generally uh, run my lasers over Wi-Fi because there's too much of a chance that something could go amiss if it drops a packet. As you can see here, it is engraving our butterfly. I'm running this without the shield on it right now, so you can uh, kind of see things down there a little bit better. I do have my safety glasses on, my goggles. Put a fan on behind me here to uh, blow some of that smoke away. There's a little fan on the back of the shield, of course, but there's no filter on it. So you want to do this in a uh, very, very well ventilated area. Of course, now this is engraving as an image, uh, and it takes 14 minutes to do it. If I would have traced that image and just set it to do a fill, it would have been uh, much less time. Just doing this as an example. Now, since there's no real grayscale here to this, and it's just strictly a black and white silhouette image, uh, here again, I, it, you know, it takes 14 minutes. If you would have traced that image and set it to just fill, it would take eight minutes. If you went to offset fill, it would take uh, about three minutes. Just some examples there. Since there's no uh, shading on this, it's uh, not an actual portrait or anything. It's just strictly a black and white silhouette. Oh, there's our completed image. Now I've got, I brought another one up off of the card, the uh, micro SD card, which is uh, what they call a deer. Oh, there's our butterfly. And that was done as an image. So I'm going to flip this over. And we're going to do this little deer in there. The wood's a little bit warped. Let's see what my focus says here. Oh, it's still okay. Yeah, I'm framing this real quick. Make sure it's going to stay in there. What I'm doing here is doing, instead of uh, the portrait mode or a picture mode, I'm doing this with uh, offset fill. So it's going to take very long at all. So I've already framed it. All I do is hit start. So you'll be able to see just how fast this thing moves. 6,000 millimeters per minute. 20% power. Very, very good detail.
and we're done. Just that quick. And there's our little deer guy right there. So now that we've gone through the just the basic setup and, and getting the unit itself running and everything and showing you how quick it works and I've got a there's a learning curve here I've got to learn some things on this uh, yet but uh, next uh, we're going to get into assembling the uh, slide and assembling the rotary and getting all your pieces and parts assembled so and then we'll uh, move into those eventually I'm going to watch I don't make this too long uh, may have to uh, chop it up into parts but wife's calling me right now so I guess this is going to do it for today so we'll come back tomorrow we'll play with this some more ah it's the next day good morning at least it is for me a little bit early so what we're going to do now that we've done the basic part and shown a little bit about how this works is uh, there are a couple more assemblies to do one of them is the uh, rotary and the other one is a slide table we're going to do the rotary here first if you look in your uh, quick start guide there, there's a little picture of it there along with what parts and pieces you will need. And we'll go through this here pretty much step by step. So one of the things you have is a extension. It's this right here. And where this goes is on the unit itself. You would loosen the screw up under here. Need about three more hands. We'll just set that there for now. You see there's a recess under there. And this will set with the, uh, like so. And this will set. Find the recess again there, like so. So that's pretty straightforward. I got a lot of stuff sitting here, but that gets that shows how to put the extension on, and it, it's pretty self-explanatory. So next, we've got the uh, the base plate here. And you look, and there's uh, six holes on one end, three on each side. The uh, rotary itself will mount to that. And we're going to need some screws for that, which are the 5x10s, being your little toolkit here. And that is uh, three M&Ms Allen driver you'll need. I get that. Yeah, there's a little paint down in that one. Yeah, you'll have that. Yeah, I don't drop the tools. Maybe I had too much coffee this morning. Oh, there's the hand mounted. You'll have another piece here. It's the uh, tailstock mount for this. And that's all wrapped in plastic. So we get that unwrapped. I'll show you how that goes on. Bottom, you see there's four holes. You got four holes here. M5 by 15 screws go right into those holes. Like so. Now on the chuck end, I'm calling this the chuck, you've got a lot of options here. Uh, one, let's say you're going to do a pencil. You could put that right inside the center here and then just uh, tighten the jaws up on it. Like so, and then you could rotary engrave on your pencil. Other options, and this is made to hold a lot of different types of items. You have these little ball holders here, ball end holders, and you have a choice of three different positions there, and these just screw in. So if you were to use those, you would put all three of those in, and you can open and close around. Uh, these are good for like holding a golf ball or something like that. Your next option, you have different jaws here you can use. And they can be mounted this way. If you're 
wanting to hold something from the inside or they can be mounted this way if you want to hold something from the outside or possibly still from the inside then you also have a several one here with several steps on it which uh, you know you got some larger objects it could be mounted that way and you you've got all these different steps here plus you could uh, hold something on the inside let's say you have a like a large wine goblet uh, this would hold that from the inside so I'm not going to put any of these on right yet until uh, we decide what we're going to do on the rotary but there's your options it comes with all the screws and everything to do that it's noted in the manual here they uh, if you open this up and you go too far these will fall out then you're going to put them back in and they have to go back in in a certain order and they are actually numbered you know, which one goes where so don't if you you know don't take this all the way out because those will literally fall out of there so just something to keep in mind okay and if they do fall out they are marked and I know you can't see this because I could barely see it there are little hash marks at the base of the jaws so this one is a number two so there's one two and this one has three little hash marks on it so you know where they go back in okay so how do you actually tighten something in there? I'm going to use this pencil here again for as an example just stick that back in there so that's kind of hand tight to get that in there good and snug you would use a couple of your hex wrenches or in my case these drivers you put one in one of these holes on the jaw the one back here and you just give a little snug like that don't go overboard or you're going to break something and that'll hold it good and snug now the extension assembly that sits out here like so so if then we can raise and lower and adjust and we'll get into that here in a second no they don't use t-nuts they use socket head cap screws m4 by 15s they will slip into these slots down here and i'm going to this is adjustable but i'm going to move this up just so i can uh, get my hands down in there And you have a couple little knobs here. And you can loosen those up to change position. Okay, these two rollers at the top would be for, uh, let's say you're engraving a, uh, a large dowel, for example, and you have it chucked up here. You don't want the end flopping around. And if it's large enough to set, and roll on these two rollers that's what you would use that for on this side here this thing rotates so it spins free so what you would want to do like I'm a, I left our pencil in here you want to bring this in you want to set your height using this knob up here then set your thumb screws down tight to hold that in there now you will want to put a little level on there and why do I not see that level I don't know where it went okay this is not the one that came with it this is the one I use on mine so as you can see it's a high at this end so I need to lower this end down so I'm level these are handy by the way if you're doing a lot of this this is a lot handier than the little just round bubble levels they usually supply and it is sitting here somewhere but you can also just clip that on your pocket too uh, it's made by made in USA I imagine it's a Stanley but I have several of these you can also clip this on a string line if you're pulling lines and they're just handy uh, but with rotaries they're ideal because you can of course I can't do it on this pencil yeah I can it'll just set there you don't have to worry about it rolling off so that's all there is to it uh, putting together the, ro the uh, rotary accessory okay now if you're using it with a nano pro it'll come with this cable here this yellow on one end it's a C to C USB cable and the black end will plug in on the back 
pick this up so you can see it. It's right here on the back. There's two different jacks, and we're going to talk about the USB one right now. So you would plug that into there, and then this would go to the yellow port on the back of the Nano Pro. Okay, you don't have to use this just with a Nano Pro. If you happen to have uh, uh, the longer B1 or the Ray 5, you can use this with that too. It comes with the necessary motor extension cables and they will plug in to this other jack right here and then that would go in place of your y-axis on your either your B1 or your Ray 5 so this is not just exclusive to the uh, Nano Pro you can also use this with the B1 and the Ray 5 okay so we've gotten through the uh, the basic setup of the Nano Pro itself and how to set up the rotary and assemble it Doing an actual project on the rotary will be a subject of another video, as well as the slider, which we are going to assemble next. There's a little bit more of assembly required on this, but it doesn't look like it's going to be all that difficult. Okay, uh, you would need to put the riser on, as we did uh, when I was doing the rotary here. The difference here, though, will be the head will face that way. So you would turn this 90 degrees on here. Uh, so it would be parallel with the uh, base plate this way and we'll do that here when we get to how this mounts just to let you know we got to do that so what do we need here well we need the base and I need these rails here and we'll get into how all this goes together I'll get you in here close okay the Coles skateboard and this is the skateboard fixing plate and they will go like this, one on each side. Like so, there's a nut search down in here that the screws go into, and we're going to be using them 6 by 16s No, that's for the slide, I'm sorry. Skateboard uses M4 by 8. I thought that didn't make any sense. Okay, these are little round head guys that looks like two and a half M&Ms there yep let's get this lined up you have a total of uh, six of those screws to put in now if you magnetize your your driver it'll be a lot easier for to get those down in there since you're going down into a recess And like so, the uh, yellow ended cable which for your accessory, plug in up here at the top into the yellow port. And then the other end of that plugs into the back end of the slide, which is out of camera view, but there's only one place to plug anything in, so that'll be pretty obvious. This is the cool part about doing things non-scripted and without any kind of practice ahead of time because I got everything here all kind of put together wrong. This needs to turn, this needs to turn, and this needs to go on there differently. So, I'm going to unplug my power cord here because I'm a little short on length. And we'll get this turned around like it's supposed to be. So this needs to face this way, and the bracket, this bracket needs to face that way. So that's got to turn 90 degrees and go like that. And now the head sets up here, like so. This makes more sense. I wondered how in the world that was ever going to line up. As I said, everything's unscripted. We take it as it comes here. Put my cable thing back on there. Now at some point we'll do that. So now I got to reposition my little clippy deals down here at the bottom. So here is where they belong. If you count the uh, hole that's in the uh, outside of the base, that's one. But then on the inner plate you would go two more holes. Then the third hole is where you would set your bracket. And this will fit up against that, like so cord out of the way here. Now I need to get power back to this. I wish this cord was longer. 
Okay, the next step would be to push this all the way to the back. Then it says to turn on the uh, little laser pointer on there. And the red dots, where are they at? Have to fall right on the edge of this. So I need to move that right there. So now I'm all positioned. This comes with these uh, hold down clamps right here that you, uh, you squeeze back here and it holds my spring tension in there. and then you can turn these knobs to tighten down and hold your material. I've just got a, a scrap in there. We're going to experiment here a little bit and get my computer turned on. Okay, I've set my focus on here. Now I need to get that back home. See what this does if I home it. That setting is disabled, so I actually have to move that manually. Ah, move it the other way manually. Back again. Something to keep in mind is make sure you have this on a very stable surface, level surface, because if you bump any one of these, you're going to throw everything off. So I need to uh, frame this. Okay, framing this here. Okay, so I better come up with a good setting here. Do this at 8,000 20% power. Goggles here. And we'll hit start, see how it goes. So yes, it works. Well, just a little quick demonstration of how the slide works. Uh, again, I, I didn't demonstrate the rotary because that's going to be a subject of a whole other video. There's a lot of setup with it, a lot of detail with it. So we'll get to that on another video on this. So the last thing I want to show is, uh, I know everybody's going to ask, well, can you cut anything with it? Well, yes, it's not the ideal laser for cutting, but it does work. And I'm going to run a little test on it here to, on some material. Uh, just to see what kind of settings I need to use. And to do that, I'm going to convert this back to the uh, original without the slide, because I don't need that on there for this. Okay, I put a honeycomb board on here, a small one, just because I had one. Uh, so I'll get a piece of uh, eighth inch plywood here. I'll throw on. Need to uh, set focus here. As you can see, hopefully you can see that the red dots are real far apart. So I just need to raise this up, to bring those two little dots on top of each other. So I just need to load in my uh, test cutting grid. Okay, I'm focused here. I got my little test grid in there. And we'll frame this, and I'm sure it's going to be in the right place. But we're going to make sure anyway that I don't run off the edge of my board. Nope, everything looks good. This does take a few minutes to run. It takes about 10 minutes to run this. Just hit start. Okay, I stopped this for obvious reasons. Um, a little, getting a little bit too hot up there. Knock some of these off of there. Take a look at the back. So I could go at... Uh, 30% power, I could go 700, mil, 700 millimeters per minute. But with this uh, at that slow speed, I, I need to change this for this particular laser because by the time we got up here, I'd have this whole thing on fire. I don't need that. I'm getting real close on some of these other ones down here. So uh, I'll do a little test cut on something here, get this cleaned up.
Not much scorching on that either. No, I mean, there's no air assist here, of course, because the uh, head is so high. But yeah, that came out pretty well. Uh, so as you can see, it can cut. And of course, it can engrave. And we did the little thing here with my name on uh, demonstrating the slide. So this is uh, kind of a demonstration of all these different features. I saw that in the rotary, which is going to be the subject of uh, another video. But yeah, this is a great little unit. And there's a lot of different things you could do with it. Uh, we'll talk about more of some of those things in a future video. Here, There's going to be more videos coming up on this. So who is this for? This is for the uh, person that is making, uh, for example, this is actually a pattern for an earring. It could have been cut out of black acrylic too. Uh, it's, it's for small things. If it's, You're not going to be making great big signs and that type of thing with this, although it is very portable. Um, and I'm going to show in a future video how you know, you made a project, you want to put your trademark on the back, you can take that plate out of the bottom there and set it on your project and very quickly engrave your logo or your trademark on it. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, again, more videos coming up. Uh, once more, I need to mention that Longer did provide this to me to test demonstrate, which I'm doing here. And uh, again, there'll be more of these videos coming along, along with some projects you can do on it. I'll put a link in the description where you can get one of these. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. I know this got to be a long one, but a lot to this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.